Well, I won a raffle to go sailing on the links. So this will be a continuation from the last video, and I'm excited. That's my happy grin. So we're going to go and actually take a sail on the links. The 1812 Privateer. Let's go have a good time. one that comes down and then kind of flattens out and you get the rudder that goes straight up. On the Pride of Baltimore 2, for instance, it cuts down and then cuts up at an angle on the rudder. It's your first you know that. But this ship is 17 and a half years old. She was built in Rockport, Maine and launched in 2001. She is about as close as you can get to an authentic 1812 ship because the plans that the British drew out when the original Lynx was captured, they used those plans to build this ship. We actually found those plans in Canada. After they, in 1813, when they captured the Lynx, they sailed her back to England, where they took the privateer apart to understand the design and the concept be, behind what made these ships so quick, so stealthy, so fast. So our deck, down below, we're a yacht interior, we're not a privateer, but on deck is virtually a replica of what was in 1812. Now we've got all the things that we need, like life rafts, fire extinguisher systems, deck wash systems, all the things you need to do to do what we do, which is provide educational opportunities to kids. We don't charge any school or any kid kids organization <laughs> access to links. We underwrite it all through ticket purchases and the donations and the revenue sailing that we do. But um, so in order to do that, we have all the compliance stuff that the Coast Guard requires for us to go the lengths that we do. This ship has been to Hawaii three times. We've been up through the uh, Great Lakes, down through Nova Scotia, around Nova Scotia, all the way down through the St. Lawrence Seaway, to as far west as Duluth, Minnesota. So the ship has got over a half a million miles of blue water sailing under her keel. She is uh, made of angelique, which is not an exotic wood, but it is certainly a, uh, a substantial wood that when she comes out of the water, she doesn't even shrink up. It's, if you're nodding yes, so you know angelique. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not live oak, but it's not far from it. You have to work it like it's iron. You don't work it like it's wood. Um, the decks are dug fur. Our masts are laminated. The masts are, the lowers are laminated dug fur. And the top mists are Sitka spruce, which is a little bit lighter to keep the weight from the loft. This rig configuration is uh, a schooner, and we are a square topsail schooner. So we're the four mist and the main mist. The main mist here is taller than the four mist, but because we're square sail, we're considered a square topsail schooner. You have many other topsail schooners, but they're not square tops. Uh, that sail is an incredibly effective 
pulling and pushing sail, you would think that you put a square rig up and you're just going to stop or it's just strictly a downwind sail. That, that's, that's an upwind sail as much as our jibs are. So um, I'm ready. Please, I'm ready when you are. Um, so we'll board and have a nice time. Thank you for coming. And uh, we'll do some history, some sailing, some hauling.
Richie. What's up, Richie? Hands to the four tops of Hallier. Hands to Hallier. in it was just going right down the main channel as the sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age it just flooded what was the low area there and everything else all the rivers coming into it just got more water in it as well and also the Chesapeake itself was created from a meteor impact and that just is kind of what created everything in there now and part of the reason that all the land in there now is all into that crater uh, of the Chesapeake uh, very slowly but it created a unique problem to where it's very hard to sail in that area, especially for your traditional vessels that were meant for sailing across wide open waters, sailing downwind. And so you had those big old bump valves that you have for your basic cargo schooners. You know, you can do it. You can get up and down those rivers. In fact, when the English first came across in the late 1500s, and came on to Roanoke Island and the Outer Banks. They obviously did it, and then later in 1670, they clearly made it up there. Thank you. 